All right, everyone. So in today's episode, I'm going to give you my game plan for the week ahead, a watch list for tomorrow, and I'll put a link pinned at the top of the comments and linked in the description for a two-week trial for those of you guys that want to start Monday, this coming week, off to a really good start and be part of the Warrior Trading community and see what it's like to trade side by side with me and the other members of Warrior Trading for the next two weeks. Now, as you can see, I'm back here in um, at home, my home office here, which is great. Spent last week on the traveling trading station, and it's nice to be back to 24 inch monitors, have a little bit more space to work with. I can spread out a little bit more instead of just three monitors. Now I've got five uh, that are dedicated to trading. So, you know, a little bit more space, which is great. And this high powered computer, which is always uh, really nice as well. So if we look at the way things finished last week, I think it's definitely worth taking a look first at the S&P 500 because this was really the sort of focus in a lot of ways of the previous week. We had this big drop in the overall market, which let's see, so it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it had begun on Friday right here. This was a week ago. We had begun this kind of pullback and then it um, continued badly as Monday, we woke up to the Japanese market down 12%. So some panic going on there. It was the worst day they'd had since 1987. Our markets gapped lower, opened much lower, but then bounced right off this level. And so far has bounced up from 510 on the S&P up to 532, which is a nice bounce. So, you know, right now, temporarily, right now, we're in a, a, a you know a little bit of a down trend, uh, stair stepping down. So it'll be interesting to see where we base out if we get a double bottom off of the 200 moving average, or you know if we just kind of go from stair stepping down to stair stepping right back up, which is possible. But there's a number of factors in play. So that definitely um, had an influence on the overall market. Certainly, large cap traders felt it more than small cap traders, but. Even small cap traders noticed that things were a little slow last week. Of course, it's also worth noting that um, there's some seasonality to the market. You can see like right here, this kind of light volume in May and June. You go back here, kind of light volume, and it picked up a little bit in September going into January and then kind of you know dipped back down here. This was a peak in March, but of course this was back in 2023. So we do notice this seasonality, June, July, um, September, you know, August, September can be a little slower. And that uh, is probably going to continue to be the case here. So that's also a factor. It's summer. We're not seeing a, a lot of just not quite as much trading volume as we would see um, during another time of the year. But that didn't stop me from having a green week last week. So if we look at my PL and take a quick look back at the previous week, I'll go to calendar. So this is my year right now, 2024. It'd be kind of nice if it showed the month monthly profit. You could see it when you open the calendar. But anyway, so January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August. So right now I'm on a nice green streak, but I'm definitely, you know, I'm definitely past due for catching a red day. Just statistically, green streaks only last so long. And so the last red day I had was back here. Um, so I had a really incredible July. And so far, August has been green, but slow. So if we look at the month of uh, August, you know, you'll see I've actually only had one day where I was above my $5,000 daily goal. Everything else has been a small green day so far this year. And this is a close call for a red day. And I think there was another close call for a red day somewhere in here, but um, it might have been the first day of the month. But nonetheless, um, you know, sitting right now, $18,213.62 on the month of August, which is good. I kind of strive and aim towards $5,000 a day and $15,000 a week. The reason it's not $20,000 a week or $25,000 a week is because I figure I'll have a green day, green day, green day, max loss day, green day. So these two cancel each other out, which means my weekly goal is the daily goal times three. So five times three is 15. However, this week, even though I had five green days, which is great, they were all small green days. So I'm at 10,000 on the week. Still really can't complain. It's a great week, but it's worth keeping kind of a little bit of context of, you know, how are other traders doing right now? Uh, and when I look around, I'm seeing a lot of other traders who are also similar to me, kind of, you know, just grinding on smaller numbers. I see some traders who are trying to hit home runs, who are getting themselves frustrated. I'm not seeing a lot of people 
uh, hitting home runs and, and, you know, like actually nailing it in this current environment. Cause we just haven't seen a lot of that, um, those types of moves. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are talking about huge on Friday and all things considered, eh, you know, it went up. I mean, for sure, you know, 10 cents down to 12 cents there, a 10 to 14 back to 12, then up to 18, uh, then up to 25, up to 28, up to 30, I'm talking about 15 cents a share, right? I mean, realistically, how much would you have gotten in that move? You know, I, and I know some people will trade this with 100,000 shares or whatever, and, you know, maybe they would make 10,000, but can commissions and everything else. I, it's just not really my cup of tea. And, and nonetheless, it ended up coming right back to more or less where it started. So that one, um, and an interesting kind of head and shoulders pattern, and, and not quite, but notice this red line. That's the point of control for the volume profile. So that was the price where we had the most volume, right around 27 cents. Above it, below it, back above, back down below, and then selling off. So I didn't uh, trade that one, but well, you probably saw my recap on Friday. Um, I started the day in the red, but then rallied back to being in the green, as you could see right here. So, you know, it took a, a number of trades. I guess it says 30 trades in total. But um, anyway, so rally back. But I think right now, the thing I'm noticing is that, you know, this is sort of my average before the hot streak began. You know, pretty pretty consistently hitting five, six, seven thousand dollar green days, a couple bigger days scattered. And then we had this burst of momentum. And now we're kind of on that post momentum lull in a way where now it's like, we got these really exaggerated moves, but they've been less convincing on a lot of them doing round trips or having um, stocks that have no news they're squeezing up. So shorts are getting more confident. Longs are kind of, you know, hunkering down, batting down the hatches. And so I'm kind of laying low right now and just noticing this trend that smaller, 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 smaller green days can lead to red days, right? This trend, if it continues, is going to, you know, start to go the opposite way. So... I've got to be careful that I don't do one of those and have a steep drawdown. And so I'm definitely thinking about that for Monday morning. Now, some would say that's not very, you know, optimistic. Maybe I'm being a little pessimistic. Excuse me, I'm yawning. I got home a little late last night. Uh, but I think that it's important for me to stay kind of grounded in reality of what the current market is. And it's not really a, a market to be incredibly um, exuberant and excited. I should be a little bit more on the defense right now, a little more cautious. Uh, so let's pull up a couple scans. Um, I'm going to go over this top trend scanner. Uh, I'm also going to look at my continuation scanner right here. All right, so we'll start with the continuation scanner. Now, this one I already know is going to be a, a no-go for me um qxo uh it, it's not it's not in the top of the range and that actually reminds me of a um an edit um hey just reminder on the continuation scanner percent. okay so I just want to make a tweak to this. But anyway, so XQO there, 427,000 share flow, really pretty ridiculous. But look at this chart. This chart is something else. This thing is insane. So from 40 to 180, back down to $11. What in the world? This chart is bananas. So right now, on the one hand, it's like if this thing, I don't know, has a news catalyst, like it would be pretty impressive because there's so much gap fill, but realistically, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. So I guess I could say that's a side chart. I think coming into the week last week, I had BURU on a side chart. Um, this one, somewhat recent reverse split, kind of thought, you know, maybe we would get a nice move on it. Never really got one. SERV serve. This is another one that um, has sort of been on a side chart, but it's just not getting a lot of attention. NUZE, this one, it's tried to pop a couple times. It's failing. CGTX, too cheap. ELEV, too cheap. ATNM, floats too high. 
RR too cheap. So the continuation scanner right now is not giving us a lot of big hits, unfortunately. Um, now looking at the top of trend scanner for stocks that were strong going into the close, let's just see if we've got anything here. Um, so possible, you know, is there an opportunity on any of these for continuation is kind of what I'm wondering. Um, I'll just put this over here for now. Let's move these over. So I just want to look at the um, daily chart, especially. So just checking some of these charts. ASTG, I know some traders were trading this one on Friday. A little bit more expensive and a little bit of a higher float, but a nice move early. SG. Again, just a strong move, just trending up. CARG, strong move trending up. Yeah. Let me check a couple that are a little slightly lower floats. But it seems like a lot of the stocks from Friday didn't really end up holding up. Um, a lot of the small cap stocks with floats of under 10 million didn't end up holding up super well. So that's definitely something to be aware of there. Yeah, so I think that unfortunately right now we don't have anything on the continuation scanner or top of trend scanner from Friday. Running up, we've already looked at that uh, down here. MSGM that popped up a little bit after hours. Let's look at after hours um, top gainers from Friday. AIMD. Yeah. It's a little cheaper. So it went from about 50 cents to 80 cents. PSIG, 12%. These gains are too small. 12%, 8%. There's nothing there. Which well, doesn't surprise me after hours on a Friday in August. It's, that it was slow, but you know, just sort of take the temperature there. So what I'm seeing right now is, uh, so here's kind of the question I would ask. Is there going to be FOMO going into Monday morning? Was there something crazy that happened on Friday that's going to get a lot of traders like, oh man, I missed that. I can't wait to get the next one. No, probably not. I don't feel that way. I don't think many people would because there wasn't much that happened towards the end of the week. So in order to really trigger the next round of momentum, we need a stock to really do something exciting. That's going to get traders sort of off the benches and back into the market. It's going to bring the volume back out. So at this point, we need to see something with some serious volatility. MGOL, of course, this was the one that I traded on Friday. And, you know, you did end up getting a move and I was kind of watching this when I was recording my recap um, right in here on Friday. I did my recap when we had this kind of move, I think it was. or, or me, I, can't, yeah, I think it was this one when I did my recap. Um, but I just was like, I don't know, guys. It did end up squeezing up, but then it gave it all right back. And it just not trustworthy. Now, it's possible, all things considered. We look at this chart, and this has been holding up for how many days? One into two days. So... I suppose it's not impossible that we could get some continuation on this one. Um, you know, you can see that ascending support line, tested below it, back above it, tested, tested, tested below it, back above it, kind of tested it here. So there's that level in play. There might be another one right in here. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. You can sort of see it's right around these areas here, right? Right there, right there. So you've got a couple that are going to uh, come together there. On the upper side, do we have anything descending coming down? Well, not really because this candle broke all of this stuff. So you might have previously had something kind of in this area. Um, and that may still be a factor. We technically broke above it, which usually, but we didn't hold above it. So it's just like we break below it, but we don't hold. And then, so that level's probably still in play. Um, it's probably, that's going to be broken by 4 a.m. So I wouldn't, that's probably not super significant. Yeah, my thought on this one, um, 
so the float 737,000 shares so mgol um let's pull up bam sec on this one let's see so they have a shelf registration which we could see right there um company is yeah interesting so located in florida mgo global market it's a lifestyle brand portfolio company mm. kind of a boring sector Yeah, I as I'm looking at this, so so if we go into this filing here, so we can see as of April first, it was a 16 million share float. So now let's just check the chart, but they did the reverse split back here, right? So that's why the float is now so much smaller. So reverse split. So 2023 fiscal year net revenue, 5.3 million, cost of sales, 2 million, gross profit, 3.3, total operating expense, 10 million. Operating loss, 7 million. Okay. So their operating loss is bigger than it was in 2022. I'm just wondering if this is a company that's going to need to raise capital. So let's look at the balance sheet. It's costing them $7 million a year to run the company uh, based on last year. Then how much money do they have in their balance sheet before... They're going to run out of cash. Well, that's not good. So, again, this was so they've got total assets, cash, cash equivalents, 1.9 million. They're not going to sell their equipment. So, you know, this is where you kind of get this question because when was this filed? June. Yeah. Okay, but then the quarterly here. Yeah, so just checking. This was Q1 of this year. So still at, an oper at, a, at a loss. Although their current assets have gone up a little bit. Hmm. Interesting. Wonder if they sold warrants or something. I think the problem here is that when you have a stock that continues to hold up for several days in a row, and it looks like they're the type of company that could benefit from raising capital, you start to worry about the offering risk. So, it's, you know, a secondary offering, and they do have a shelf registration. So it seems like their ability to raise capital is, um, is there. So that's MGOL. I don't know. You know, again, so, I mean, look, it, who knows? If tomorrow between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m., it ends up popping up to nine and it's holding in this area, then it's like, all right, this is our gapper. I guess we should focus on it. But I'll be a little bit concerned about the risk of news coming out of an offering. Uh, but still, if it's the leading gapper, I'm interested. Now, if pre-market, it just sells off, then it's out of play and it's gone. But it's worth keeping an eye on because of the fact that overall, it didn't die on Friday. And that by itself 
is an accomplishment because a lot of stocks did die on Friday, but this one held up. So at six, right, more or less what it opened at. So, you know, went lower, tried to fail, came up, tried to go higher, and then kind of back to this area. So it may be worth watching that going into tomorrow. Um, so that one's on a side chart, MGOL. RGC, this is another one from Friday. You know, a little bit of a bounce here. You, get, you, guys, you guys did get a move, but very light volume, very thinly traded. It's just not liquid enough for me to trade. Um, I, I looked at it on Friday and the spreads were too big, so there was nothing for me on that. And, and I think generally speaking, my game plan is tomorrow morning, you know, first thing is, of course, I'll pull up my scans. I'll see if anything looks good. If we have something that looks good, then, um, you know, I, I'll get over here quick and start trading, you know, right around 7, 7.30, whatever, if there's something that's moving. But if nothing's looking good, then I have to wait, just like I did these last few days, for something with breaking news. And what ended up happening, you know, Thursday and Friday was, the breaking news setups mm, weren't that great. Something might pop up and then drop, maybe it would curl back up, but then sort of fade. We weren't getting that really strong momentum off of breaking news. That's just not what is happening right now. In order for that to start happening again, we need a stock that pops up on breaking news and a lot of people are like, nah, it's probably not gonna do anything. Next thing you know, it's up 100%. You're like, son of a gun. All right, now I gotta jump in. So now we're trading it from 100% to 150, 200%. Maybe it goes higher. And that sort of reignites the interest in trading stocks with breaking news. That's how it usually is. So we need to, to see something that really does open up and gives us a big move. Because if if it continues to just be these sort of little baby pops and then fail, uh, that's, that's, you know, people just get bored of that. And there's not really any point in taking that risk. I think that something that can be tough for um, a trader like myself who trades every single day is the reality of acknowledging that not everyone does that. Not everyone trades every day. There's a lot of people that only trade when the market is hot. And so, you know, the result is that I'm down here in the trenches every single day trading, trying to find some opportunity, but there's a lot of people who just totally, you know, check out and then they come back when the market picks back up. So, you know, it'd be a very different calendar to not have trades every day. It would just be like, oh, I just come in, you know, and catch a couple trades when it's hot and then I'm gone for a couple of weeks and then I come back. And that's usually people where trading isn't their primary thing. It's, you know, secondary or it's, it's a third or fourth source of income. So it's just like whatever they get is great, but they don't feel the need necessarily to sit down here every single day. But of course I do and I have been, you know, you look through these um you know, these are all the years here of me sitting down every single day and trading. Um, and well, this is actually just the last nine years uh, because that's when I started using TraderView. So all the years before that aren't even included, but every single year, the calendar is more or less the same. I'm showing up every single day. So, you know, I'll be here tomorrow. And if we don't get a lot, I'm content just to lay low, you know, take a couple of small trades here and there, try to build my cushion. If I can, then I'm going to size up and get aggressive. But if not, then I'm going to go slow. Uh, so still have that 5,000 share cap until I've made over a thousand bucks. So I don't know if I'll be able to actually get logged in here. Um, sometimes I can't get logged in over the weekend. They yeah, log in outside system hours. So whatever, they're doing maybe some updates. Um, but anyways, if you go into your platform, at least for light speed, you can cap your share size and put your max loss on. So it's always good to start the week, I think with the guardrails on a little bit, even if you had a great week last week, just let's start fresh. Let's have a good start to the week. So guardrails on, sort of take it slow. If I start to build a cushion, get myself up 1,000, 1,500, start to size up. Get myself to 2,500, 3,500. Things are going good. I'll size up more. Get 5,000, 7,000. Here we go. We've got some action. I think the next best chance of a really good trade is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week. However, we really do need a stock that makes a really solid percentage move to ignite another round of real momentum. And, you know, I, I don't know. that That may come tomorrow, but if it doesn't, it would be sort of silly to expect that I'll have a huge, you know, day where I 
double or quadruple the daily goal just based on the way things have been the last week or so. Okay, so that's it for me. Um, I gotta, uh, I gotta get some other things done here and I'm a little exhausted. So I want to try to get to bed early tonight and get myself ready for, uh, the week ahead. And hopefully we can have a really strong day, um, you know, and start the beginning of the week in, in really, you know, a good spot. All right. So again, those of you guys who haven't already checked out the, um, two week trial, there's a link for the warrior pro preview pinned to the top of the comments linked in the description. So you guys can check that out and I look forward to seeing you uh, in the chat room bright and early tomorrow morning. And I want to remind you as always that trading is risky. My results aren't typical. So manage your risk, take it slow and always practice a simulator before you put real money on the line. I'll see you back here bright and early tomorrow morning.